Yeah, so is there any other goals that you have, uh, Gerald? Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of my goals right now are, are um, around just optimizing my current okay. business. Uh, okay. You know, I'm, I'm starting to work on building business credit lines, things like that. Okay. So I had to make some adjustments to how my corporations are registered. Okay. Uh, I'm starting to um, transition to working outside of a, like out of a trust. Okay. Uh, so I have some stuff going on with that right now. And, um, you know, and then really just um, getting back to automation. You know, I've been I've been doing it for 15 years and when i got started a lot of the stuff we're talking about didn't exist right you know and so you know getting up to speed on social media crms vas automation funnels like all this stuff i have an understanding of it but it's you know putting it in putting it into action just it's taking a little bit of time because you know i'm making a transition and it's like yep. teaching an old dog a new trick, you know? Yeah. So, so I'm just pivoting right now. So that's that's where I'm at. Awesome. And then uh, Laird Shepard had this question, how much did a, a trust start? Uh, a trust start to set up? I'm, I'm asking, probably how, much, how much did it cost? Uh, yeah. So, so the short answer is it varies for, okay. the type, for the type of trust that I'm setting up it's it's gonna cost me about uh thirty thousand okay um it's a it's a complex uh non-grantor type of trust gotcha. and it also comes with uh some you know entity formation like c corps and llcs and right and also a, a non-profit structure so there's a, a few different things that's coming along with it yeah now now larry i'm gonna add i'm gonna say talk to a attorney about that yeah We're not attorneys we are not yeah. with this is for entertainment purposes only that's the disclaimer yeah. but i will say for it could be as low as a thousand fifteen hundred exactly. twenty five hundred for because the way trusts work is they have different purposes there's there's about 80 different types of trusts and so you know you have to set it up based on what you're trying to accomplish financially right and and okay for me because i'm i've started a fund and i'm dealing with larger sums of, of money and, and and bigger assets and you know i need more a little bit more of a protection and or anonymity and, and, and things yep. like that yeah yeah most definitely i was actually it was funny about that i was just a uh, reading a podcast about um, Pace Morby's uh, setup that he has with um, and how his structure is and and things like that. So I definitely recommend that. Um, and I think there is one group that he recommends uh, to do it. Um, I think it's I, I can't remember the name of it, but go check that out. Um, and they're usually on on top of everything. So, and they can actually do a, a free consultation call as well. So, um, so with you know, um, is that the so? What other goals do you have, Gerald? That that you're trying to set this year or this quarter? So, so, um, so. I'm, I'm in a, in conjunction to growing my real estate business. Um, I'm starting a, a traditional business uh, okay. in, in the tax in the tax planning space. Okay. So um, I'm launching my tax uh, preparation business. Okay. And it all fits together because, like, when I work with like real estate is important, but it's it's a lot of different things you need to start to learn about, right? Like the entity yes. structure and formation credit yep. uh, you know financing how that works you know construction you know auto, like there's a lot of different skills you develop and so uh, for me you know because I do coach and mentor I'm trying to you know create systems where um, if I'm introducing something to my students I don't want to send them out 
to other professionals that might not know how to help them implement this this structure to get this right. purpose, like for this purpose right you know because we'll say crm but then there's like 10 different ones or we'll gotcha. say you know it, you know like trust and there's multiple or llc's yep. and there's you know there's different ways you can use it and so for me uh with the tax planning business the reason why i'm getting into that is because i had to implement more advanced tax strategies you know mm -hmm. because of real estate and then you know i'm coaching people on what to look out for and gotcha. a lot of tax professionals don't necessarily know how to work with real estate professionals and so i just decided to do that based on my relationships and because I, I've been studying that for a, a little bit of a, uh, some time. And then the last thing I'll say about it is when it comes to raising money, like on a bigger scale, you have to have pre-existing relationships with, with people. And there's yeah. different things that you need to know. And so when I'm helping people with their financials, you know, managing debt, credit, things like that, it's yep. easier to kind of help them come along and invest alongside of me on my deals so it's a win-win gotcha. win situation most definitely i i 100 agree with you on that and um you know raising money is a it's a skill it definitely is and you know that's another another goal that i have is, is i do want to raise money because one other goal that i have as well as having one creative property as well as you know to to buy and hold is it'll probably be towards the end of the year um probably won't be towards the beginning is i want to try to do a flip as well okay now being in this market it might not be the best idea so i will have to um it has to be a smoking deal in order for me to do a flip and I want to do that flip with zero money out of my pocket and I want to bring in private money lenders who will come in and uh, allow me to, to work that deal. So whether it's giving them equity in that or, or not because, or just a straight return. Okay. Um, that's one of my goals as well as I'm going to buy and hold one and I'm going to buy and I'm going to flip one. So, yep. Um, so on on that aspect, what about you, Khalif? What uh, um, you, you? I know you talked about you wanted to do buying holds. Um, any any uh, flipping properties or anything like that? Um, I leave or raising all, money. Um, opportunities open, kind of like Gerald. Um, yep. You know, sky's the limit. Um, I've learned, I think it was Grant Cardone says, you kind of say yes and figure it out after. Yep. So um, definitely if the opportunity comes, um, that'll yep. be dope. I have a mentor that's already put a bug in my ear that uh, if I want to, uh, you know, decide to veer outside of wholesaling and my buy and hold goals to flip, you know, he said, uh, He's there to kind of walk me through it and gotcha. he's kind of transitioning into a situation where he wants to ultimately his goal is to be a lender um, yep. from the real estate so he's kind of in a position where he can do some of that and has lent to me on some uh hotel deals gotcha so just taking okay. that the next step further i mean he's he's an avid flipper he's been flipping since right when the market was turning 2010 2012 i think is when he got in the game so uh he uh i hooked up with him in 2018 but the year prior he sold mm -hmm. all his buying holds um to have liquid cash on hand because we thought we were going to get a correction back then so um, right he's kind of repurposed that and now has been you know lending those funds and continued to fix and flip the build those cash reserves now um to now turn either to buy and hold some of these things or just like you said from our marketing channels if we get um you know, a hot deal that makes yeah. sense to flip to do just that. Exactly. And that's kind of where, you know, 
you know, I'm looking at like, okay, great. If this deal makes sense, we'll, you know, we'll go ahead and flip it. But for every deal I analyze, for every deal I do, I'm learning more and more. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't care what people say. You learn by doing. You're not going to learn by just analyzing and, and being on YouTube and and just just okay I'm, I'm waiting for that perfect time to get in there you got to actually do get in there and I think where it might help people better and this is where I want to come in and help uh, and I know Khalif you do as well and, and so do you Gerald um, but is if you have somebody to bounce the um a, the deal off of and say hey is this really a good deal okay and this is what i'm trying to do with it is this a good deal um and we can kind of go by the parameters that you're saying on what you want not whether it be a good deal for me to wholesale or khalif to wholesale it's okay you're trying to buy and hold it all right awesome can you afford to do this, this, and this? And can you afford if this goes wrong, this goes wrong, and this goes wrong? Because that's typically what we've seen. You no. know? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Khalif. No, I was going to say that for sure because my uh, primary residence, I bought subject to. Um, but at the time, I, you know, what did they say? I was just straight hammer, cash offer all day. Yep. And... Uh, through another mentorship group, um, a guy that's been doing creative deals for like 20 years, kind of, mm -hmm. you know, I gave him the deal and he was like, well, kind of ask some probing and fact finding question to see what's important, more important to the seller. Is it the cash or is it, you know, the, 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 the speed of the sale. Right. Um, and that's not a corner I had turned until that point. So just to your point. You know, I turned a deal that didn't work as a cash offer into a subject to deal because I was able to leverage someone else's uh, knowledge and expertise where yep. I might have just passed on that for sure. Um, had I not had somebody, you know, take a second set of eyes at it. 100 percent. 100 percent. That's awesome. I didn't know about your house being subject a subject yeah. to deal. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, it's been it's been awesome because, I mean. You know, I got into it with very little cash. I think about five grand in closing costs um, to control a hundred thirty thousand dollar house. And and did you have to check the credit? Nope. Did no you credit. have to put down a down payment? I mean, it's like, did you have to do like none of that typical bank stuff that you actually had to do? So yeah. it actually works perfect for somebody who is a self-employed person who doesn't want to wait the two years for the income process and do all of that um say say i i'm not saying i'm doing this but say i go out on my own and i quit my day job and i want to do this full time well now if i want to go buy another house um personally i need that two years of income you know because i don't have a w-2 and i don't have that so now I've been doing wholesaling for two years, but I've also, I, the last time I did it was with a business partner. And this past year was my first year doing it as my own company. So, um, you know, things haven't been, uh, things have been, I think the best thing for me was that I matched what I made the year before because I'm on my own. And to me, that's a huge win. So, and, and I did that this year. That's so, awesome, man. That's yeah. And, and Randy, we gotta, we gotta talk because, you know, you've, you've inspired me, man, to really execute on this, this Facebook group thing. And, you know, it's a, it's another way for me to contribute because like real estate has been a big thing for me, man. It's huge, huge. So I'm always open to share, you know, my successes and failures and just having the right platform and way to do it. You know, I have a course, not because I want to sell a course. I have a course because if I can't help you make sense of a $97 decision, how are you going to get into real estate? Right. You know, like if, 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 and yeah, it doesn't require your money, but it does require some money and you gotta, 
you got to, it's a mindset shift. And so yep. as a coach, I learned, I learned um, some of these things. And now it's like, okay, well, I put certain obstacles in the way so that we can have these conversations and, you know, so yep. you can start moving forward. And to your point, like you already set the intention, you know, all the things that you just said, you could do in the next 30, 90 days. Yep. 